Hello, thanks for joining us. Tonight, schools that don't teach our children a lesson that could save their lives. Also tonight, the amazing sequel to our story on the Aussie-born fitness superstar and the husband who dumped her. You won't believe their domestic arrangements now. And the Adelaide model who found fame and fortune in London thanks to a haircut. The press are now saying that us new girls are like, that we're thin, we're scrawny, we're, we're in fact, we're just trying to create a balance between the two. I think she's definitely on the road to becoming a big, big star. The big Melbourne Cup question mark. Could a British champion win Australia's most famous race? Do you believe you can win this race? Uh, yes, I do. I believe we can win it, but uh, I think it's going to be very difficult. The best thing for, for it would be if they could uh, run a place and an Australian horse could beat them because all Australian racing now in. I wish they weren't here, to be honest. But first up tonight, the latest terrible discovery in a state forest south of Sydney. More grisly evidence that a serial killer is preying on young travellers. Late today, police searchers uncovered skeletal remains believed to be a skull in the Belangolo State Forest, five kilometres from where the remains of four backpackers were found only recently. Joining us now, the commander of the task force investigating the killings, Superintendent Clive Small. Superintendent, what can you tell us about these remains? Uh, all I can tell you at this stage is that they were discovered by police searching the Belanglo State Forest uh, about mid-afternoon. We're lost. I mean, we, we really are lost. Like Mona reporting, parents take note. Next, how an Aussie teenager cut her hair and found fame and fortune. She left Adelaide four years ago, a teenage model with a sight set on making it big in London. At first, Emma Balfour struggled to stand out, but just when she was about to give it away, she decided to have a haircut. As Mark Llewellyn reports, it was the best decision of her career. A clear, cool autumn day in London, and a blonde in black strolls anonymously. And yes, she is Australian, Mark Llewellyn reporting. Next, the British push to steal our Melbourne Cup. It's one of the hardest races to pick a winner, but every year we keep on trying. Australians will splurge $60 million on the Melbourne Cup this year, and around the world, hundreds of millions will be watching on television. But in Britain, no guesses who the favoured runners will be. Martin King reports on an expensive gamble to win Australia's most famous race. I know that when um, this was first mooted, they, people here were saying, oh, they're 500 to one about coming. Well, Drum Taps is truly an international horse, bred in America, owned in Japan, trained in England, and ridden by an Italian. I'm a bit doubtful, not about the class of the imports, but about the preparation. I'll go for great vintage from Air Seattle. Next, the surprising sequel to our story on the Aussie fitness superstar, Susan Powder, and her terrible husband. If you saw her, you won't forget her, America's most outrageous diet and fitness guru, Susan Powder. Last week we reported how the Australian-born superstar is making millions with exercise videos, television commercials and books. Ironically, Powder attributes her success to her first husband, who walked out on her and their two children. When that happened, Powder went on an eating binge, tipping the scales at nearly 19 stone or 120 kilos. But then she turned her rage against her ex-husband into a triumphant physical transformation in just one year, losing half her body weight. Now she's swimming in fame and fortune and forgiveness. Oh, got powder feeling downright charitable. That ex-husband of hers, the man who cost her so much pain and so many pounds, he lives right downstairs from Powder and her new husband, an unusual co-parenting arrangement the two worked out for their children. I mean, so he's my inspiration? It's, there you have it. Without me, she wouldn't be doing what she's doing. If you hadn't been such a jerk... If I hadn't been such a jerk, right. Yeah. Well, he may have cheated on me, but I danced topless. So, 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 we didn't make mistakes. This was so hard for us. This was not just, oh, let's all live together. We've worked so hard, and when you look at our babies, and you see, I mean, Damien and Kyle, 
This is good. It's right. This and is my family. It may look a little weird, but it's a hell of a lot healthier than my family was. It is a functional, healthy, loving family. And if Powder continues to use him as a public whipping boy... I ate, I cried, I nursed babies, and I planned his death. Nick doesn't seem to mind. Powder is now supporting him. If that infomercial gets people moving in a positive direction, and I'm the scapegoat for that, or I'm the heel, or I'm that crappy dude that, you know, whatever, I'll take it. Her second husband, Lincoln, is a rock musician and also does her hair. Don't make it short. And he has to do it often. As God is my witness, when I did this, I thought, this is what I've been looking for all my life. It's the only time I ever use a blow dryer on my body. Reticent. <laughs> That's all we have time for tonight. Back at the same time tomorrow night, we'll see you then. Good night.